All right, guys, I just wanted to come back to the office real quick before we get into the physical aspects of the pre-wire of what is involved in the planning stages for a big job like this. This is a large residence. There's a lot of stakeholders, architects, builders, the end customer, the general contractor. Um, there's a lot of people you need to coordinate with. So having full blown plans like this uh, can be super helpful to make sure that there's no confusion and nothing gets left out. So what I use is I use Microsoft Project. Uh, it's kind of free or low cost depending on how you look at it um, and I just draw out a variety of shapes and colors and then those shapes and colors coincide with particular types of uh, equipment or in this case in pre-wire drops. Okay so what I usually do is I start out with the electrical floor plan if I can. What I've done here is I've taken a copy of it or a screenshot from the original CAD drawings I've pasted it into project and then I've overlaid my symbols and notes on top of it. Uh, when I originally got these project plans, the entire house construction was mirrored left to right. Um, I've just flipped this image around uh, later on down the road and that's why this text down here at the bottom is, is mirrored. Okay, so what I want to start with is these red circles. These are whole home audio speakers and there's quite a few of them on this plan. Uh, the matrix equipment I usually use uh, has them come in sets of six, so it's either six 12 or 18 controllable zones, two speakers each. Um, there are some kind of some wiggle room there if, if you need to uh, change things up a little bit to try to stay under that number of zones, but that's the standard. We don't want a customer to sort of inadvertently go over and cross that boundary into seven zones, which could increase the cost of the equipment significantly. Um, so here in the entry um, patio, we've got two speakers and I can see on the plan uh, these circles here are ceiling fixtures, and then the line indicates the uh, electrical wire that will connect those, and then it looks like the switch will be just inside this door. So when I'm placing these speakers, I want to make sure that I'm away from the wall to prevent reverberation. I'm also not right in the center so that you get the benefit of both of the speakers in that particular zone. So if we look a little further at speakers, this is a good example. So in order to stay under the zone count, these two rooms, this is an office and a craft room, these are pretty small rooms. There was really no need to put two speakers in each one, and the customers opted to have both of these rooms be one linked zone. So the downside is they can only turn those on or off simultaneously, but they've saved themselves one additional zone in the system. We've done the same thing over here in the master. Uh, this extra room up here has one speaker, and then the master has one speaker as well. And if you'll notice throughout the plan, these speakers are not necessarily uh, in center or in line with the room. A lot of times the electrical stuff will take priority. So in this case, there's a big ceiling fan or a chandelier right here in the center of the room, which would be the ideal location for a speaker, um, but it's not available. And so instead we've had to kind of scoot it down a little bit toward this fireplace. Um, over here in this office, you'll notice again, there's a, there's a ceiling fixture in the middle and uh, due to some additional um, other trades kind of taking up some of the bays in here and stuff. Uh, we've had to scoot this speaker all the way over here uh, close to the uh, closer to the wall. So you do end up having to work around these other subcontractors quite a bit. Uh, usually the cadence, um, once the house is dried in, the HVAC guys get to go first. They've got the biggest and most critical stuff. Um, then plumbers get to go next. Um, their stuff is the most rigid. Um, then electricians uh, and then and then us we get we get kind of whatever's left we have the most flexible cable we can uh, we can go around the most obstacles so it just makes sense that way um, but in terms of mounting things in bays not necessarily the wiring you do sort of have to work with what you've got okay so on my particular plan the uh, the green triangles represent media or TV drops uh, there's 18 of them in this house they're spread all over you can see we've got one here in this theater room um, for the cabinet itself and then another one for the projector area and this green dotted line I've got going between the two indicates a smurf tube uh, a hollow flexible PVC conduit that connects those two areas that way in the future we can run an HDMI cable or control cable or anything we really need to uh, between the cabinet in the theater room and the projector which is uh, going to help us tremendously. We've got a couple more of those around as well showing uh, areas where we can then access those cable locations after the spray foam's in. So just to touch on this we've also got these uh, blue circles. These are wireless access points. We've got these spread out and I actually like to put these kind of near the edges of the house. 
that ensures that the outside of the house, especially the pool area that's going to be back here, is going to have adequate coverage. And they'll all sort of blend into the center here, into this great room. Um, then also we've got some, uh, some purple triangles. These are actually thermostats. We run these uh, for this particular builder. It uses a, a pretty special wire, um, which is a bit difficult to come by um, because of the, the super high efficiency units that are being used. All these yellow marks in here indicate the positions for the theater room speakers. Um, the squares are the subwoofers. The circles are ceiling speakers and the triangles are wall speakers. Um, then we've got um, some notes as well, like right here. This is our DMARC command into the house, and we've got a note here that says that AV does need to go to the gate. This particular house has a, a long run to the, to the private residence gate, about 800 feet, so we'll be running some fiber there. Also got a note here about the safe room uh, that we just need to leave that spooled up and keep an eye on it so it doesn't get uh, trapped behind the wall. And then um, we've got a note out here about these, uh, these particular uh, speaker and uh, Ethernet wires. This stuff's all going out to the pool house. We're leaving these, uh, these speaker wires for landscaping speakers that go in the ground. Okay, so here on the top story, we've got uh, more of the same, but we've also got the location of the actual AV racks. Um, I put these gray Ethernet wires. They're really short. They're, they're borderline. Uh, we just use kind of scrap wire for them. And that's what's going into the low voltage boxes that are inside the theater room. There's also a media drop here. It looks like it's just kind of hanging out by itself, but there was eventually a uh, wall added here um, to facilitate that. It's interesting to see where they place the AV room in this particular house. It's kind of off here into one corner and uh, that can actually increase the use of wire significantly. If the server room is sometimes more centrally located then you know, you can kind of branch out from each corner and uh, save a lot of wire. But over here, I mean, just to get from the left or the right of the house is, is probably at least 60 feet. All right, so what we've got here is the RAW2 Lutron lighting system uh, repeater overlay. And based on the uh, specifications for that system, each repeater um, has a 30 foot radius. So what I've done is I've drawn a, a 60 foot diameter circle to scale on these drawings. And then I've uh, kind of used this shape with its crosshairs to be able to move those around. And a trick I did is I, I changed uh, the main repeaters to blue with some transparency and the auxiliary repeaters to yellow with transparency. So you can see the green is where those two overlap. And as you can see, I've had to use two main repeaters um, because we, we end up with uh, needing six overall and the system will only support uh, four auxiliary for one main. So this blue one here is located in the server room. And then uh, this other main repeater is going to be located downstairs inside the theater cabinet since we know we have power and internet there. And then uh, these two yellow repeaters um, are located in the upstairs attic. This one's above the master. This one's kind of on a catwalk over by some HVAC units. I've got a video showing this one. And then this one over here is in some some uh, accessible attic area through a, a door that leads to the attic space above the garage and this last one over here is above this uh, kind of external garage um, up on the second floor uh, above the uh, above the garage door I've also noted here this red triangle is for the visor control panel um, the wireless Lutron system you can see that if I hadn't added this repeater here it would not be within the wireless spectrum of, of this last repeater over here. So I kind of had to add one more repeater um, in order to get uh, controllability right here. So this is where I've got three of the garage door uh, open close running. I've got an alarm wire running here and I've also got some power that I'm pulling from where this auxiliary repeater mounts. So I've got all those wires coming here. It's got a good um, area of effect here in the kind of the front of the house before they drive under this um, structure here to get to the garages so they can go ahead and activate their lights from their vehicles. All right, so this is a look at the uh, surveillance camera plan. You can see there's a lot of cameras on here on all these eaves. This right here is the front door camera I discussed. And then uh, this camera is actually facing the house. It's kind of from this center area that's surrounded by a circular drive. I've also got a, an easy diagram over here of what the gate will look like where there's a camera facing inward and outward at the gate. 
And then looking at that, what I've done here is I've, uh, I've looked up the specifications on the cameras and gotten their field of view angle. And I've then drawn a triangle to that same angle. And then I can just rotate that triangle as necessary and line it up with the camera position. So I use some transparency here in Publisher so that you can see the dark areas here are actually getting hit by, by multiple cameras. So this particular area right here, which is in between the two big garages, is getting hit by one, two, three different cameras. So that's a really dark area. Um, you do see some, some areas here that don't uh, necessarily have coverage. Um, they do, they are getting hit by a camera. So see like this camera right here is facing this direction. But at some point you just get so far away from it that that uh, the viewing isn't great. So there's a lot of, uh, of finagling with these cameras. We try to get the number down as low as possible. Um, but ba basically these cameras are mostly just for kind of situational awareness is what people look, use them for. See who's in the driveway. Um, see if the, the lawn's been mowed, see if the Amazon package has de been delivered, etc. Um, but this is kind of what it looks like. It's a bit confusing, um, but it, it gives a good picture as to, uh, to where the, the camera locations are going to be pointing to. Okay, and the last thing we're going to look at is the alarm plan. Um, similar to the, the audio, video, and network plan, uh, this one's pretty robust in this house. So basically, we are covering every single door and window um, in addition to the garage doors, the garage doors are these orange triangles here. There's also a garage door here in this workout room. Um, all of the red triangles indicate doors or windows. Some of these windows are actually um, open left and right, so we had to make sure we had uh, two sensors for those. Um, some of these uh, windows, like this one down here, is a crank style window. The uh, green uh, shapes indicate the sirens. We've got one inside here near the doorbell area. And then we've got another one outside here at the D-mark area facing uh, the direction of the road. The purple shapes indicate motion detectors. So the overall security plan would be uh, if somebody breaks in through a door, uh, maybe by jimmying it open or somehow bypassing the sensor, uh, they can only get so far before they're going to get hit by a motion detector. Um, you call these trap zones. So an example of this, um, somebody could break into this window right here uh, which I believe is part of the master closet. And they could reasonably steal everything in this particular area and escape. But as soon as they cross into the view of this motion detector, the alarm is going to trip. So similar here, they could break into this room, maybe steal what's in here because these are inoperable windows and there's no glass break sensor here. But then as soon as they get out this door into the main area, they're going to trip the alarm. Speaking of glass break sensors, there is a lot of glass in this house. Uh, we kind of had to pick and choose what we were going to uh, protect. So this room has two windows and a glass garage door. It's going to get a glass break. There's a huge four pane window, or uh, I'm sorry, four pane door here. It's getting protected by glass break. This room has double stacked windows, low and high. Um, so it's got its own sensor and then the main uh, master bedroom also double stacked windows, a lot of glass in there, but no operable ones. And then out here we've got a huge four sliding door um, that collapses into a cassette inside the wall. Um, that's all getting protected as well as uh, the sliding door over here in this front window. It's all getting protected here by this front glass break sensor. And then this glass break sensor is covering these two windows um, and also you know, giving additional coverage to these, these front areas as well. In green, we've got the alarm panel locations. There's going to be one here right when you come into the garage like you'd expect, one here near the front door, and also one just outside the master. For uh, protected smoke detectors, we've got one just outside the master suite. We've got one near but not in the kitchen, uh, so it's just down this hallway to the side. And then on the second story, in addition to a lot more windows and motion detectors, we've got one more smoke detector right at the top of the stairs, which is the most... Uh, the best place you'd expect smoke to be rising to. Uh, in addition to the exterior windows and doors, we've also got uh, two door entries into the garage space. So I've notated those as well. Uh, that way just, you know, any kids opening that door or anything like that, um, we want to be aware of that. Okay, and that's basically it for the pre-wire plan. Um, I do recommend going back and taking pictures or video or pictures and video of anything you've done, including areas around what you've done, 
Um, it's a good reference to be able to come back to later if you need to. So this was a, a big house, um, pretty confusing plan. I, hopefully I broke it down enough um, so that you can do something similar for your own home.